Hey folks, it's Fernando doing another video for Remote Survivalist and in this video I'm going to be addressing the issue of the water problems in Ohio. I got an email that says Ohio can't even boil their water. Hi Fernando, what a horrible situation in part of Ohio where their water became so contaminated they're told they cannot even boil the water to make it drinkable. How would you handle that situation if it happened to you? Thanks. Well, answering your fir your question, first of all, how would I handle that situation if it happened to me right now? I would just grab a glass of water, open my window, <laughs> and just collect as much water as I want because it's raining a lot right now. It's not accidental. It rains a lot in Ireland. That goes without well saying. It, that's a, a disadvantage in terms of weather, but it's also a key strategic advantage that I took into account most definitely so when, when considering this part of the world, the amount of water that there is. Water is a key strategic um, consideration when it comes to basic survival and preparedness. You cannot live without water. It's part of the rule of three that says you cannot live three, hour, three minutes without air, you cannot live three hours of exposure to extreme weather conditions, you cannot live three days without water, you cannot live three, day, uh, three weeks without food. All right? Uh, air and water, even though they are some of the most crucial, they are so often underestimated. And you know, it, the the idea of, of having fresh air all around you, it's very easy to take it for granted uh, until the moment that you don't have it with you anymore. When uh, air is contaminated or, or there's dust in the air, then you understand how desperately you need fresh air and how quickly you would die if you don't have it. Yet respirators, um, uh, face masks, that sort of thing is not as often uh, addressed or talked about. Same thing with water, you see it a lot. Uh, I at least do see it a lot of um, people that store, you know, they have a fil the water filters, purification tablets, but not actual water. And usually the reply is, well it takes a lot of, of space. And you know, of course it does take up space. And of course it's, um, it's bulky. But in a house, you shouldn't have much of a problem finding somewhere to store it. And guys, let's let's be honest, it's pretty much free. You just need a, a few containers. You could even use some of uh, refill uh, uh, soda bottles and that sort of thing, or or buy some water containers. But at least you have to have water stored for this kind of of event. It, it doesn't happen all the time. But again, we take it for granted, which is one of the most common mistakes: taking things for granted. Um, when you don't have them anymore, you learn to appreciate them. I, I definitely learned to appreciate uh, water the, the hard way on on several occasions. In Buenos Aires, it's it's common, especially during the summer, where when the grid is stretched to its max, and there's uh, often problems with the supply of water. I think the most I've gone without water in Buenos Aires was almost like a week, like five five days or so, and, and that's no joke. In the middle of summer, 110 degrees Fahrenheit or like 40, 45 degrees centigrade, that's, that it tells you that's really <laughs> uh, a problem. Much worse than not having power. Not having electricity, man, that's, that's not a big deal. Not having water, that's when things get ugly. And you, you realize, you know, things like taking a quick shower, washing your hands, having a freaking glass of water and you don't have it, you go to the stores, and the supermarkets, the grocery stores are all running out of water. They they sold out their their bottled water. Uh, you see some of the the trucks driving around, uh, supplying water to to the people in the middle of summer. And that's if you're lucky. That's if there's even a truck driving around supplying water, uh, which many times there's there's not one. So yeah, again that feeling of turning the faucet, not a drop comes out. Not pretty. I learned because of that to appreciate water and uh, store it. So I would have these big jugs of, of water, about five liter e liters each, and it would have like, yeah, it was like five liters each, and it would have like 20, 30. I would stock them everywhere, anywhere. Uh, even the smaller uh, soda bottles, you know, with one liter or two liters of, of Coke, that sort of thing, filling those up. The smaller bottles, uh, you know, free and you could just uh, refill them with tap water and the smaller, bo the smaller bottles are, are handier for washing your hands, brushing your teeth or just drinking 
Yeah, the bigger ones are of course well you can refill refill the smaller containers but also you can I, I had <laughs> yeah, this is crazy but I had this yeah, adapter thing so I have to take a, a quick shower with these five liter jugs so when there was no wa no tap water I would just hang one of these five liter bottles upside down in the shower and with a, a hose and a system that I, I had uh, put together I would just take a quick shower with, with that and yeah much better than, than not getting a shower at all so yeah you, you have the basic guideline is having um, a gallon of water per person per each day that's the basic guideline that you often see, men see being mentioned and I would agree with that at least a gallon per day that's the number that you're looking for and how for how many days well it depends on how much you want to live <laughs> that's basically it how much uh, how, how, for how long do you expect to stay alive uh, that sounds you know complicated because you would like to live for a very long time yet you cannot store uh, enough water for that you know what at the, at the very least a, a week worth of, of water two weeks that's at least in my opinion the minimum I, I wouldn't want to have less than that I know it gets hard when there's no space there was a time when I was living in a, in a you know, not, not a small apartment but I didn't have lots of space and you know th that is an issue now I would use lots of those smaller bottles and pretty much put water uh, fill them up with water and put them anywhere I could you know just um, any small piece of any small uh, room that I had I would just store water there in in, uh, in the apartment knowing how, Im how important it is uh, two weeks would be a, a minimum in my opinion you wouldn't want to be any less than that in terms of, of water how, how would you do that? Well, just any clean uh, uh, container that is adequate for storing water, that's uh, food grade plastic. Uh, you can refill uh, some of those uh, soda bottles as well. Just clean them up, rinse them up. Um, t a drop of, of bleach, uh, if you're going to be storing them for a, a long period of time. Many times you don't even need a drop of bleach, but it's, uh, it's not doing anything wrong to it. Mostly you want to avoid the contact with, with uh, sunlight. Sunlight in some cases creates uh, algae. It happens to me in some bottles. Basically you're going to be rotating that every, every year. That's uh, what I did. That's still what, what I do now. And uh, a year is it's good enough. In my experience with, with most plastics that are safe for storing water, a year is, is okay because it's about the time it takes that the water starts tasting kind of bad. It's still safe to drink, but the taste is really off. It's not good. So rotating it once a year is really not that much of a problem. In in places like uh, like where I live you now in, in Ireland, having so much water, uh, it's an advantage because uh, if there's anything ever wrong, just refilling your bottles of water, it's uh, you know, more than a week without rain, that's that's not common. I mean, it, it rains any other day, every couple of days, probably you will have a little bit of rain, and, you know, it, it's really not, uh, at least the supply of water in Ireland is not is not a problem. Uh, if it comes down to that, you have lots of rain, and it's it would be easy enough to just gather um, you know, water in your backyard and that sort of thing. It, it's, not, it's not a big deal, but it's something to be, uh, contemplated and kept in mind, especially when you're looking at places to live, uh, potential uh, places to relocate to, which uh, in my book I did cover this as well. This isn't anything that uh, just came, um, came to mind right now because of what's happening in Ohio. I, uh, I wrote specifically in my book Bugging Out and Relocating, the link there below and all. I, I did mention, for example, in Australia the big problem I is water what happens if you cannot trust the infrastructure anymore. When I mentioned uh, Australia as a, a potential uh, country and I went through some of the possible uh, cities and such, Perth would be a city that clearly has uh, water as a, a weak link. It's a, a city that depends on, on uh, you know, may end up needing a, a desalinization plant so as to provide water to the population that's a pretty weak link like you you definitely want to consider uh, water when looking at places to live how how the grid is set up 
where water is coming from, how is it provided, is it provided through a gravity fed, do you need pumps that need electricity to get the water where you are, it's, it's something to keep in mind and, and a pretty big point, water, um, sometimes taken, taken uh, for granted but you definitely shouldn't do that. In terms of making water safe, filters, that sort of thing, uh, our friends from Directive 21, uh, 21 uh, Jeff the, the Berkey guy, um, great guy and, and those uh, water um, filters are, are excellent. In terms of, of bleach, you have some of the, uh, instead of going for liquid bleach, go for these ones. These are like uh, tablets, you know, bleach tablets. Uh, there it is. Bleach tablets, you find these in, in different formats, but basically you're looking at just getting pure bleach if you can. Try to avoid anything that's scented because, you know, you don't want to have uh, any of that for uh, for the bleach you're going to be using for purifying water. Uh, but, uh, yeah, th th these the advantage of, of these is that they're very easy to store and they last for a very long time. And no volume almost whatsoever, no how compact this is. This is a pretty big advantage. And besides that, it doesn't um, lose uh, its power. The problem with liquid bleach is that uh, bleach uh, evaporates, you know, it's, it loses its power as time goes by. Uh, and it's a little bit, it can be a little bit messy to store as well. This makes it so much easier, and it's really not that expensive. Sometimes you find it in the form of, of granules or where the tablets come in different uh, bottles and such, but look, look up for these. These are pretty good. In terms of, of more portable ways of uh, purifying water, the life, life scrub. Again, from a, this is from a, one of our uh, advertisers, uh, Survival Camping. Um, yeah, these are, are pretty nice because it's pretty compact, very small, as you see. So for a uh, bug out bags or, or emergency kits, kits, that sort of thing, this uh, is is well suited. But again, the importance of having actual water is, um, you know, it, it can't be emphasized enough. Guys, that's all for now. Remember to subscribe, share the video if you did like it. Have a great day and see you in our next video. Take care.